Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna look at short step tests, when you should use them and how long they should be. All right, Andrew, when should we use a short step test? I think that the only two um, times that I would use a short step test is one in a, a new athlete who does not have the endurance to handle a longer test and I'm, I'm really trying to pack it down into something short and simple for them to get a, sh a quick assessment of their physiology. Uh, and the other reason to use a, a short step test, which is used fairly often, uh, uh, both in the literature and in sports, is to look at maximal levels. So the idea of keeping it short enough that people can get to a very high intensity or the highest intensity possible before they get too tired from the test itself. So in the research, we see many different step lengths. Some are one minute, two minute, three minutes. So how do you pick the right duration of each step? Yeah, it really does uh, depend on, on how, uh, how fit your athlete is and how high you need to take them uh, and how big a step you're willing to put them through. So the shorter the step uh, and the higher that wattage they need to go, they're gonna have to take fairly large uh, increases in intensity uh, and those steps can cause sort of alarm phase reactions, um, which would be ide ideally you'd avoid those kind of a physiologic alarms so that the patient or the, or the athlete can move up fairly quickly without uh, driving any alarm phases so that we can just start a, a smooth ramp up or through steps up to get them high intensity without, without creating any uh, unnecessary reactions that, uh, that throw off uh, their physiology and throw off their reactions. So now let's talk just about the one minute steps. How long should a test last ideally? Yeah, again, try not to go too long, but enough steps that you have some data uh, and give the body enough time to warm up. These, most people sort of aim between nine to 12 minutes uh, after a decent, for these kind of tests, because most people are looking at maximal values. The patient, the athlete needs to be warmed up ahead of time. Uh, and there are some protocols that have very clear and defined warmups. And it's important to remember if you're, if you're looking at a specific protocol, um, I know Hunter Allen and, and some of the, the work that's been done by that group had very clear protocols that they use. And some of the, the warmup protocols were much longer than the tests themselves. Uh, but follow the, the advice from the warmups and then aim for a test that's nine to 12 minutes. And obviously, if you use longer steps, your test is going to last a little bit longer. Yeah, I mean that, that's the 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 only downside to going long long steps is is the duration that the athlete has to go. Um, so there's more information that can come out of those those longer steps, but you may have athletes that can't tolerate the longer steps, especially if you're trying to look towards maximal values. Uh, if they've gone too long at the sub maximal values, but hard intensity they may just be too tired to actually show you what they can do physically at the, at the very high end. Okay, and last question, and in my opinion, the most important one, uh, Andrew, is how do you calibrate a short step test? How do you determine the starting intensity and the end intensity for someone? Yeah, so that um, does become uh, very individualized and, and is a bit of a challenge. So uh, I tend to start uh, step tests at very low intensities because I'm interested in seeing what happens to the body as it warms up. Um, and the challenge with that is if you start too low in intensity, their steps are going to have to be large enough that you get them in nine or 12 minutes up to that very high intensity. Uh, so um, the, from a calibration point, you're, you're not going to be able to calibrate the athlete perfectly, but you should have some idea of where you're going to with this, with this test. So if you have a professional level cyclist, you know that they are like they likely have very good data of what kind of wattage they can put out, and they're going to put out wattages upwards 400, 500 watts, and sometimes even higher for the sprinters, even higher than that. So starting at 100 watts at a very low intensity, and knowing that you have to get up to some intensity, 500 and higher, you imagine that it's going to have to be 50 watts or even 60 watts per step to get you there in nine to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the newer the athlete is or the newer they are to cycling or whatever sport you're testing in, the smaller those increments will have to be to get them to their maximum. Uh, and we've tested some people who are very new to running whose maximum run speeds less than 10 kilometers an hour. So you can very easily get them in a half kilometer an hour increments 
easily get them up to their fastest running pace uh, in, in that nine to 12 minutes. So the calibration is gonna really depend on the athlete that you have and what you predict to be close to what their maximum intensity that you're aiming for, then starting them at a very low intensity and dividing that by the number by nine to 12 to get your step tests uh, intensities. Yeah, and I'll add that from experience, I think this is probably the most important part of the test is calibrating it properly so that you can get all the data that you're looking for. Because like you said, if we too too big of a jump for someone who's not trained enough or not fit enough, then you're not going to get to the nine to 12 minutes. You're not going to see as wide a range of intensities. And conversely, if you do 10 watt steps with a professional cyclist, you're going to spend a few days there uh, on the bike. So uh, make sure you calibrate your test properly. So if you want some more information on this, check out the description below. Uh, also check out our other videos in this series, like the video, post your questions in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.